Welcome to Western Perspective. I'm Malatha Fawn. Domestic violence remains one of WA's top issues, with a major campaign to raise awareness being rolled out over the next two weeks. Extra support has been announced, with the launch of expansions to a refuge for domestic violence victims in Quinana. I sat down with the Minister for Women's Interest, Simone McGurk, to discuss the issues surrounding the family and domestic violence issues. Can you please tell me about the importance of this centre in regards to young women maybe experiencing domestic violence? Uh, we're here today at the expanded opening of Andrea Meyer, which is a, um, a women's refuge in the Kwinana area. And uh, we opened the facility, it was brand new 12 months ago. And when we opened it, we actually had an opportunity um, through some COVID recovery funds that were available through the state government to, um, to increase the capacity. So today we're um, announcing a doubling of the capacity of this refuge. What's important about this particular women's refuge is that it can cater for lots of different families, lots of different um, demographics. So uh, it particularly, uh, they're, they're standalone units that have central security and central, some central, um, central uh, security as well as facilities, but each of the units is standalone, but there is an ability to open up between units so that you can have much larger families. Uh, available and that includes um, you could have teenage um, children and teenage boys yeah. which has been a restriction a restriction in some of the previous women's refuges that were kind of communal living and um, it, was, it was difficult to have older boys there. How many um, uh, families and people can the centre support at one time? Uh, we've just increased it to 12 um, families so uh, that can either be an individual person or, or with a number of children. How long do people tend to stay? Oh, look, that'll vary depending on the circumstances um, that the family are going through, or the women and their children are going through. So it can be a very short period of time, or it could be a, for a longer period of time while um, while uh, other accommodation is sourced or their um, legal or safety issues are resolved. Um, so you mentioned teenage boys before. What services are available for men experiencing domestic violence in WA? Uh, I mean, any of the um, services that are available are, um, for anyone experiencing domestic violence can be sourced um, for, through any of the helplines or any of the facilities. Uh, our experience is that um, it's usually boys, like children of um, older boys, uh, as children of women who are experiencing domestic violence. Uh, and so there is a men's helpline as well as a women's helpline that's available. Uh, what advice would you have for any victims of domestic violence who are watching this? I think the main issue uh, that we need to understand is that, um, that domestic violence or family violence, violence against women can take many forms. Uh, it can sometimes be physical abuse, but it can also be controlling behaviour, um, uh, financial abuse and the like. So reach out and get help. There are helplines available and perhaps we can make them available on your program. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic abuse, you can contact White Ribbon at 1800 737 732 for help or go to their website for more information. And now, here is AMAWA spokesman Dr Andrew Miller with his weekly COVID-19 update and commentary. Hi, thanks for your time. Certainly Omicron is going to be the uh, word for this Christmas. Everyone will be talking about uh, something they've never heard of before. Uh, except, of course, the Greek speakers amongst us. So this particular variant is transmitting extremely quickly, and that's about all we know about it at the moment. We don't know if it is as dangerous or more or less dangerous than the current uh, version of Delta that's out there, but we do know that it's a very, very rapid thing, and we already see a couple of cases in Sydney, and we would have good reason to expect that anywhere that has open travel will already have been exposed to this variant and will now start to take over, it seems, the area that Delta's been occupying. Until we get a handle on whether our vaccine coverage is any good for it uh, and on how severe the disease is as a result of this variant, uh, we're not going to be able uh, to understand what our best responses should be uh, in the longer run. We know exactly what to do in the short term, and that hasn't changed since the start of the pandemic. This is an airborne disease. We must always be breathing clean air. That means that we need to use very effective masks whenever we might be uh, around other people when this is in our community. And we also uh, need to be ventilating our indoor air spaces properly with fresh air 
and monitoring the carbon dioxide levels and making sure that people are wearing masks when they're in close contact. Now, all of those things will un uh, unravel quickly over the next week or two as we see um, exactly what the situation is here in Western Australia. We need to be alert, but not alarmed. We know what to do. And in terms of a vaccine for this variant, once we figure out if we need to top up on the current uh, vaccines, then it may be that we start seeing a different booster rolled out or a completely new vaccine rolled out. And one of the great things about this mRNA technology that Pfizer and Moderna have is that it can pivot extremely quickly uh, to a new type of vaccine. And now that we have the distribution uh, and the administration uh, of these vaccines uh, in place, then there's no reason to believe that we wouldn't be able to very quickly um, attend to vaccinating the population with something that could work for this variant. Now, uh, that also means we've got to take care of the business of vaccinating our 5 to 11 year olds. Frustratingly slow in Australia, given that we've had many millions of children now overseas vaccinated. And uh, although that may not be complete protection against this new variant, at least that is something uh, to prevent those rare cases of severe short term disease and those much more common cases, unfortunately, of long COVID. Uh, that we're seeing in the paediatric group as well as in the adult group. So will this mean more border restrictions in the short term? Yes. Uh, is it going to disrupt people's travel plans for Christmas in the short term? Absolutely it will, unfortunately, and we know the toll that's taking on people. And that's why also air-gapped quarantine, effective processes, testing on arrival, all these things that we've been banging on about for over a year are just as important as they ever were, not just for this variant of concern, but for the next one and the next one and the next one, because we know that this disease has a long way to run, that there are many countries that haven't had our advantages so far in terms of vaccination. And that means that there's fertile breeding ground uh, to throw off more variants as time goes by. Thanks very much for your time. And if you can find your kids an N95 or KF94 mask for Christmas, I think that's a really good present. Cheers. That's Dr. Andrew Miller, and that's Western Perspective for this week. We will be back next time. But for now, it's back to you, Ivan and Sarah. Thanks, Melly. And here's Leo with what's coming up on 6 News tonight. Thanks, guys. And on 6 News breaking news, the new COVID-19 variant detected in more countries as the World Health Organization names it Omicron. Travel restrictions imposed on Southern Africa over what's now being labelled a variant of concern. Los Enti authorities slam so-called tinfoil hat-wearing tosses over reports Aboriginal people are being forcibly removed from their homes and taken into a forced quarantine. The claim's spreading overseas, but some are actually missing basic facts about who's who in Australian politics. And the world reacts to Pat Cummins being appointed Australia's Test Cricket Captain, with Steve Smith as his deputy as Tim Payne announces he'll be taking a leave of absence from all cricket for the foreseeable future. You can see full details on those stories and plenty more by heading to our YouTube channel. Just search 6 News Australia to find us or our website, 6newsau.com. For now, though, guys, it's back to you. Thanks, Leo. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on our website, wamnnews.com.au. From Sarah and myself, we wish you good health, good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for stopping by.